El Nimbus Light 1 again. Uh, you know, 99 right now, only because it's $99. I think the update to the upper... There it is, there it is. Come on, let me shimmy in here to the studio. Welcome back, everybody. Cheers. It's an Asics kind of day here in the studio. There it is, the gel. Nimbus Light 2, video one, publishing on the channel. Yes, we've taken two. I don't know what happened, everybody. Uh, sometimes companies give instructions saying uh, the shoe is under embargo. For some reason, I thought the gel Nimbus Light 2 was under embargo, but I guess it's not anymore because I'm seeing it pop up all over the interwebs. I think I stopped, I think I passed 50 miles in this shoe maybe two or three weeks ago and I never got you the 50 mile full review. So here we go, Asics Gel Nimbus Light 2, but yes, uh, second video publishing today. Not exactly sure what time it's gonna publish. It'll either be noon or 5 p.m. my time. But yes, there it is on the shelf down there, the Asics Hyper Speed. Okay, it's freezing out here, so I gotta be expeditious. Let's dive into the Gel Nimbus Light 2, a neutral. Let's do the dance test. Yeah, it's dancing, but not too much, okay? Um, in fact, that connects to one of my positives for this shoe. It's not dancing too much through that twist test. We're looking at an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. Uh, reports that I am finding 25 in the heel, 17 in the forefoot for that eight millimeter offset in the gel Nimbus Light 2. For women's size eight, we're looking at eight and a half ounces or 243 grams. Men's size nine, we're looking at 9.5 ounces or 270 grams. And let's just confirm real quick on the scale in my size. One, one second, here we go. 9.03 ounces in my size. And there it is on your screen uh, in grams as well as my score. Okay, soak that in for a second. Let's move on to the engineered mesh upper, which reports are coming out that this is 80% uh, made out of 80% recycled material. That's pretty crazy. Like, I don't know how you pull that off technologically wise. Is that the, did I say that right? Tech, as far as the technology they put into this upper and what materials like down to the scientific level, but 80% is kind of a lot. So anyway, it is an engineered mesh upper. I am going to, did I bring it? Oh, I did. I did remember there is the gel Nimbus light one over on the shelf. Let me grab it here, frankly, everybody. And actually, I should probably put this on the scale as well. This connects to the slightly lower score for the Gel Nimbus Light 2 on the weight scale. So there it is on your screen, 8.7 ounces approximately versus 9.03 ounces. So you know what I always say, it's never good when a, when a running shoe gains weight from iteration to iteration. You wanna keep it the same or, it, or maybe even drop it down just a little bit. So anyway, that's part of my scoring. Now, I am a little conflicted on the, I'll just do a little comparison here on the uppers between the Gel Nimbus Light 1 and the Gel Nimbus Light 2. The Gel Nimbus Light 1 is coming in more breathable. Now, I will say the overall comfort score is going toward the Light 2, the Gel Nimbus Light 2. And let's do, yeah, okay, here we go. Heel counter. So fairly stout, everybody. Okay, it, it does flex if you really put some push into it, uh, but it is a pretty stout upper. Let's just real quick remind my, yeah, okay, whoa. So this is that uh, rock hard. Like, I can't actually bend that, okay? So they did uh, loosen up the heel counter from last year's iteration uh, to this year's iteration. Now, one other point, well, a couple more points. Very plush collar, uh, definitely, yes, a semi-gusseted tongue, okay? And uh, the score, okay, lockdown is a decent score, but not an amazing score. Now, moving on to the overall score for the upper, I am finding a little too much material through the toe box, specifically at the end of the, uh, at the base, I should say, of the eyelid chain. So right here at the base, when I when I lace up and lock down, it just scrunches up. I do not like that. And some companies just uh, haven't quite, you know, I'm thinking of like New Balance in like the Beacon V2 from 2000, I guess it'd be 19. I just don't like any scrunching up happening. So that is happening just a little bit, which is why the overall score of the upper is not Incredibly high. Moving on to that midsole, we're looking at flight foam midsole material, okay, with an impact guidance system, which I felt, okay, through my foot strike. It's that IGS here on the back. Um, a nice, 
So I prefer the four foot striking, but when I was mentally making the switch to say, okay, let's test it out with a heel strike, I did feel a nice roll through that foot strike. Uh, it was just easy to roll through, roll through without overthinking it too, too much. So I do think that impact guidance system is there through this midsole. And um, okay, also it's crazy, but I think 20% of the midsole is made out of some sort of recycled material as well. Again, I think ASICS is really trying to push in that direction of, um, you know, creating shoes that are made out of uh, reused material. So uh, moving on to, oh yeah, the ride and energy return. There is my score, a bouncy ride, but it's not, um, it's nothing like the Nova Blast. Just so you know, it's not nearly as bouncy as that was just off the charts bouncy. This, if the, if the Nova Blast is a, is a nine, this is probably closer to a six and a half or seven on the bouncy and energy return scale okay now for the overall ride of the midsole it is a let's just pull hold it up there so you can see the difference there between the outsole i am going to say a very stable ride which you know connects to the outsole and the midsole i like the feel of that stable ride and i know a lot of people don't like to feel like they're going to roll their ankle when they're cornering um so i think if you get this shoe it's going to feel very stable underfoot and speaking of the outsole we've got that asics high abrasion rubber plus and again, we'll just throw it up here. I think that they made a nice step forward. Can you see the difference there between the Nimbus 1, Nimbus Light 1, and the Nimbus Light 2? So they reduce the amount of outsole rubber. I love that. Great job, ASICS. I, uh, I actually really enjoyed the ride of the Nimbus Light 1, but I do think that they have made a nice step forward, especially on the outsole. Just not, they just didn't, um, there's just not as much uh, outsole rubber, which is great. For the fit and the comfort fit, I went true to size and I'm glad that I did. I probably could have pulled off depending on the sock that I'm pairing with the shoe. If it's a thinner sock, I could, I think I could easily pull off a half size down. If it's a thicker sock, like in the winter time, okay, a little, little tip of the day, uh, winter socks, you wanna go a little thicker, keep your feet warm. Summer socks, a little thinner to keep your feet cooler. Um, so that might impact what sizing you go for. But I did go true to size, a little, a smidge roomy for my liking through the toe box. I like a little bit more of a snug fit through that toe box, so that's okay though. Um, I, yeah, I definitely would, for me personally, I definitely would not go a half size. Up for the comfort of the shoe, very comfortable. Plush collar, plush tongue. Um, I guess I, one last point on the upper on the tongue. Well, I think the tongue maybe is a little long. I think they could reduce the height of the tongue just a little bit, but overall comfort, very, very good. Like a nice soft landing underfoot. Doesn't feel hard. Oh my goodness, almost forgot. Durometer test, okay. It's soft, but it's dense. Does that make sense? It's soft, but it's not, but it's dense. It's not a sketcher shoe. It's not, um, what else, what else? It's not, uh, you know, it's not the Hoka Mach 4 that's also gonna be coming out. It feels dense underfoot 100%, which is probably why the weight is a little high there. For let's dive into it. Well, let's first go here. Positives, stable feel underfoot 100%. My drawback is the weight of the shoe. Durability prediction, I'm gonna go five to 600 miles, leaning in the direction of 600. Uh, yeah, actually, I would almost say the Gel Nimbus Light 1 would probably be a higher durability just because there is more rubber on that outsole on the bottom of the shoe. Um, now, how will I use this shoe? Who is it best for? I'll use the shoe for daily training. This is a classic daily trainer shoe, not a tempo day, too heavy for that. Um, easy day, and you know, some people, you know, what is the difference between an easy day and a, and a, and a, a daily trainer shoe? Uh, easy day, I actually prefer a little more soft landing underfoot just to really baby those legs. Uh, but because this shoe is coming in, it's just a little dense underfoot, I am therefore gonna put it into the daily training category. Now, who is it best for if you really, really appreciate a wider landing platform to create that stable ride under foot? Now, price point, $150. Same price point. I, I'll put it on the screen. I believe this guy brand new was $150. Now, this guy, the Gel Nimbus Light 1 is coming in at $99. Um, so I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on that here in a second. But my score for the price is not so, not so good. I think for daily trainers, you want to be striving for that $120 to $130 price range. $150 for a daily trainer, that's a lot. 
it's like compared to the rest of the marketplace, that is a lot. I don't know what to tell you there. It's just uh, that, you know, I, you got to pinch those pennies to pay $150 for a daily trainer. Now, I'll put on the screen some other shoes to consider buying, and I'm just going to tell you right now that if I had to make a decision and keep putting all the factors into the bowl, into the mix, you know, with price, with drop, with upper, with midsole ride, I would actually buy the Gel Nimbus Light 1 again. Uh, you know, 99 right now, only because it's $99. I think the update to the upper is good, but I don't think it's good enough to warrant uh, paying an extra $50 uh, to go with the light two. And that's just where I'm at every now. Again, if you do prefer a stable ride, go with the gel Nimbus light two, because it is a Y they did. They, they changed the overall geometry of the midsole and outsole design. Okay. So quick specs on your screen. There you go. Final score 7.3 out of 10 after my 50 mile test not bad but not great okay 7.3 out of 10 okay everybody thanks for being here thanks for watching question of the day we're going to open it up completely here what was your run today and what running shoe did you pair with that run okay did you do a track workout did you do a long run and if you can go into a little more and of course we'll get the emoji going down in the comments if you can go into a little more explanation as to your rationale as to why this is where the education really comes in down in the comments uh, pair why did you pair that shoe with that particular run I'd be fascinated you know depending on the surface that you ran in the temperature out oh my goodness so many factors to consider thanks for being here of course we'll toss it to the ASICS gel Nimbus light one uh, full review right here right here a6 gel nimbus light one full review right there right there thanks for being here thanks for watching keep buttering it out there seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow